what would happen if we take an Arctic Freezer 4U SP3, a cooler meant solely for Epic and Threadripper CPUs, a cooler so huge we pay property tax on it, a cooler meant for 300 watts workloads thanks to its 8 direct touch heat pipes. What happens if we take this 1.2 kilogram chunk of aluminum and we strap it onto a consumer grade CPU. Let's find out and spoiler, it's not what you think. First off, don't do this. We will use the cooler to cool down an epic CPU in the near future, it just hasn't arrived yet. But the freezer for you is meant to be used on an SP3, TR4 or STRX4 socket. And that's also the sole mounting hardware that comes included. Actually, that thing comes in a pretty much white box, completely pre-assembled, and you have the mounting brackets already on there, and the only thing you will find is a tube of MX5 thermal paste. So, no. This thing will not fit onto your Ryzen or your Intel I something whatever CPU, but the thing is, I have zip ties. And before anybody questions this, we benchmark the cooler in three different ways. Strapped to the 3900K using the high quality zip tie method, or by just placing it on top of it without anything, because its weight alone takes care of the rest. And, and this is my favorite one, with me standing above it and pushing it down. All three ways created exactly the same results. And I learned something. The heat pipes, they were great because they burned the hell out of my hands when I was pushing it down. But what about the fans? Although these look like regular P12s, they are really not. These are the P12 Maxes before P12 Maxes ever existed. Spinning at up to 2300 rpm, they are pushing 71.9 CFM at 3.3 mm of H2O. Of course, using a dual ball bearing, because this is supposed to be installed inside a regular server, and these kinds of things are really aiming for longevity over quietness or enjoying your life. No, it's, it's just meant to survive. In case you are wondering, the heatsink itself is 115 mm high, 97 mm and a half long, and 120 mm wide. Yes, this is one giant piece of heatsink. And without further ado, let's lift the curtain of how this thing performed while cooling down our regular 3900K benchmark machine using the low 120 watt workload. Fucking horrible. At 40.4 degrees C above ambient, the Arctic Freezer 4U did not even manage to beat the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Halo, a cooler I could physically fit multiple times into the Freezer 4U. And it did so no matter what I changed. I strapped it to the board to a degree where I thought I would rip the board in half. And just standing like there, with, with me standing above and holding it down with everything I've got, oriented in all four orientations, no matter what I did, it's plus minus half a degree, it was the same freaking result. Except for this orientation where it was like half a degree, but everything else was almost exactly the same. And the noise to performance graph looks, looks just as horrible. In no way, shape or form did the Freezer for you come close to anything, not even the Freezer 50, a cooler which was notoriously bad considering what the Freezer 34 was capable of doing. So why is that? Because it's a server cooler strapped to a consumer CPU. It's not even because of the mounting. You can ghetto any cooler to any socket and expect it to work fine, as long as the cooler is actually designed for the CPU size. In the end, half of the eight heat pipes are already out of reach for the CPU. And if you think about it, if you have a cooler on a CPU, the fresh air is going through the heatsink, passing one heat pipe, then another, and then maybe even a third heat pipe. And from there on, it will start touching a heat pipe or 
the heat fin, uh, the, the, the fin around a heat pipe, which is actually doing something because it is touching stuff on the CPU or it is touching the CPU itself. The, the first few rows don't do anything. So no, this is a stupid idea. As much as I would have loved to make like an awesome secret mega CPU air cooler overpowers this 3900K video, this is just not going to happen. Strapping an epic Threadripper cooler onto a comparably tiny CPU just creates a the world's most ineffective cooling solution. Don't do this. And before you wonder, yes, I did try uh, to run it at 250 watts workload, but even at full speed, the CPU throttled really hard. Most probably because the heat is being generated in that tiny, whiny little spot, whereas the 4U is just designed to take heat away from a huge area, a combination that doesn't work particularly well. And uh, oh yeah, this is also why I burned my hands like really hard because 250 watts and the three central heat pipes, they were perfectly fine, believe me, my hand knows it. This was stupid, but it was for science. And in case you ever wondered why manufacturers are not creating bigger and bigger and bigger coolers with more and more heat pipes, well, because size matters the least. What you need is effectiveness and for consumer grade or like limited sized stuff, just slapping more ain't gonna solve the problem. But for actual server CPUs, who knows, the Freezer for you will make a reappearance once we start filming the homemade for you server and hopefully in there we will see it performing as I expect it to perform, you know, like with three hit pipes, but like with eight. But uh, until then, we need to wait a bit. And for you, if you are building a PC at home and you think you are the wisest by taking the biggest cooler possible and gathering a solution, this is not going to work. Anyway, I think this should be it for whatever the hell I was, I was thinking with this video. At this point, a huge thank you to Arctic for sending it over, and sorry. And I promise this will make a reappearance. I'm not going to waste this type of cooler for this type of video. On a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel membership, so if you are looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but will also serve to pay the property tax of the For You. Because tiny houses are taxed like crazy here, and the For You has like its own address. It's For You. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the Geomagic Future Eskimo Junior Neon 36. There might be Junior in the name, but it's not Junior. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.